have is to schedule these um, times for your natural ventilation to occur because that's when you'd want them. So I'm going to go back to EP launch. I'm going to select that um, no HVAC, no vent, and then I'm going to open an IDF editor and save it as 23 no HVAC 5 air change per hour vent. So we're going to change this from no ventilation to 5 air changes per hour. And the purpose of this is that a very controlled natural ventilation will be about five air changes per hour. If it's uncontrolled, in other words, you open a window or door open really wide, it can get into um, 80, 90, 100 air changes per hour. That can actually cool off the zone too quickly. And in a split second, you go from being overheated to being underheated. And then the uh, heating turns on. So you can get really high heating loads uh, because of too much natural ventilation. So in this first run, I'd like you to go to the ventilation object, the uh, design flow rate object, and now we're going to use this exhaust ventilation. And we're going to turn this on, and this is an exhaust ventilation fan, so it's a controlled five air changes per hour. We're not going to worry about the fan energy use at this point. And you want to set the minimum indoor temperature to be something reasonable for that climate. Uh, 23 degrees is probably okay for Miami. It could even be lower than that, I suppose. Maybe 22 or 21 would still be okay. I'm going to go with 21 for this. Um, the maximum indoor temperature, again, um, I think for Miami, I'm going to jack this way up to 40 degrees Celsius. So I make sure that that, that fan is always on. Um, and then the minimum outdoor temperature, I'm going to keep at 15 degrees. The delta temperature at 1 degree. Okay, so I'm going to save this and run it. So it's done simulating. I pasted the variables into my dashboard. And now you can see that the number of hours of overheating has been dramatically reduced because we've got a lot more air moving through the zone. It's not a closed up greenhouse anymore. It's a little bit better ventilated with those five air changes per hour. And actually, if you go down to this next graph down here, this airflow describes uh, when that fan is running. You can see that the, we're getting as high as 5.8 air changes per hour because we've got five air changes per hour plus infiltration plus the um, fresh air and uh, a baseline, the minimum when it's white is at 0 0.6. That just represents the infiltration plus fresh air, and that's these times in here. There's a lot of ventilation going on in the morning and in the nighttime, and not so much in the midday. That's probably, I'm guessing, because the outdoor temperatures are higher than the indoor temperatures. So you can see, start to see that probably in this graph, although it's a little hard to see because this is showing the whole year. Um, for instance, right in this area here, you can see that that gray line is going above the blue line. Let's look at that week. That looks like it's about the first week in August. So we go to the week tab here and type in August 1st, then this graph here is going to show you the black line is the outdoor temperature, the pink line is the, the air temperature, that's called the, the zone air temperature there, and the purple line is the operative temperature, so that includes the surfaces around it. You can see that operative temperature, sorry, are staying a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer than the mean air temperature. But you should also know that the thermostat is just looking at the air temperature. So the heating and cooling would theoretically turn on uh, whenever the air temperature gets at set point. Right now we've got no heating or cooling system, so there is no heating or cooling system turning on. It's just uh, the free running building. And you can see that there are in fact some areas, uh, some times of day, almost every day, when the outdoor temperature is above the indoor temperature. And so Theoretically, ventilation shouldn't be turning on. We can check this over here on the right. You see that there's a uh, diagram of ventilation against wind speed and humidity. And this gray line here is the ventilation. And you can see that ventilation is by and large coming on at night. And then 
dipping way down during the day. Uh, and so, um, so yeah, whenever the, in the midday period, you can see that that ventilation is turning off. Um, importantly, here on August 2nd, it looks like the ventilation just turns off for one hour, and the rest of the time it looks like it's on. And so if we go to August 2nd here, you can see that it's not as hot a day, and because the indoor temperatures are always higher than the outdoor temperature, it's always beneficial to uh, get that ventilation in, and I think that that's probably what's happening. And notice that the absolute value here, these temperatures are still quite warm. We're in the 30 degrees Celsius range. So uh, you'd probably want cooling anyway. But this is just kind of a window into what happens in this completely naturally, naturally ventilated building. So let's output these graphs. File, uh, print, as we did before. I'm going to... Um, print these and then save the images as PNGs and um, I'll come back when this is done. So those images are now exported and I can drop them into InDesign. I'll give you a little tip here about um, doing this quickly. I've got a page that we developed before and I'm going to copy that page or duplicate the spread like so. But now I've got two spreads that are identical. I'm just going to take 7 and drop it right on top of my thermal autonomy graph from before and you see that that automatically updated and cropped to the correct extent. And the same with this one. Look at both the thermal autonomy and how it's changed, the humidity and how it's changed, and also the airflow and how it's changed. Um, and so now we actually need for this to show a little bit more stuff, which is the airflow down there. And I think it's probably best for all these to be on the same page. So I'm going to take this and move it up to here. And this is going to be a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to group those together, move them off to the side. And then so I make sure everything scales together. I'm going to group everything here and then control shift and scale it way down so that I can now align things vertically. So I've got my initial run with no no ventilation, no heating and cooling, no ventilation. And then I've got a second run here which has the ventilation um, and no heating and cooling. And you can also see when the outdoor temperature is higher than the indoor temperature and so no ventilation is occurring here. And I'm going to just outline that area, which kind of occurs through the middle of the day in this zone, more or less, through about there. It seems like there's, there's two or three times that that's happening. So now I can create a schedule where I want cooling and heating system to occur. I want it to occur when the ventilation is not occurring. And then I can create a schedule for the ventilation uh, so that that occurs. And that's called a mixed mode operation.
fraction of the opening area. 